Thank you for making the time for the show that focuses on matters affecting the African continent. It's a pleasure to have you with us. This week on the show, we speak to Dr. Susan Mboya Kidero. She's the president of the Coca-Cola Africa Foundation and the founder of the Zawadi African Educational Trust. We get your views on the issues and we have Africa's top 10. You're watching the Africa Leadership Dialogues. I'm Julie Gishuro. This week on the show, we host Dr. Susan Mboya Kidero. She is the president of the Coca-Cola Africa Foundation, which has launched a number of impactful initiatives across Africa. She'll be talking about some of those. She also founded the Zawadi Africa Educational Fund, a non-profit organization that provides scholarships to academically gifted girls from disadvantaged backgrounds in Africa to pursue higher education in the US. It's based on the highly successful Kennedy Mboya student airlifts of the 1960s through a partnership with individuals and institutions with an interest in creating leadership opportunities for girls in Africa. Dr. Mboya has received numerous awards, including the Elder of the Burning Spear, in recognition of her dedication and service to the development of the country's youth. She obtained a BSc in Pharmacy from the University of Connecticut in 1990 and a PhD and MSc in Industrial Pharmacy from the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy. Let's get straight to her views on entrepreneurship, development, education, the youth and women. Thank you so much for making time for the Africa Leadership Dialogue, Susan. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This, the range of work you do is incredible and your story is amazing as well. So we've got so much to talk about, but let's start with your role at the Coca-Cola Foundation. Tell us a little bit about the projects you're working on and the impact you've seen so far. Sure. Um, the Coca-Cola Africa Foundation has been in place for um, a little over 10 years now. Um, we started as, um, and, you know, basically responding to um, uh, crises in Africa, um, primarily the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, but over time, we've narrowed our focus, and we now focus on just three key areas. Um, water, for obvious reasons, yes. we use a lot of water. <clears throat> and so our, our main program, our core program, is called RAIN, um, the Replenish Africa Initiative. And um, that is a commitment that we've made to provide um, water and sanitation to, initially we had a target of 2 million Africans um, by 2015, and I'm very happy to say we're on, on track right. to deliver that. But we've, we've re renewed that, and um, we've actually said we now are going to provide water and sanitation to an additional 4 million for a total of 6 million Africans by the year 2020. That's incredible. As you, you're, you will continue with other programs, but very quickly, how do you provide the water? What, what, what is it, the piping? For, what do you do? We actually, <clears throat> we'll, we'll actually go into a place, and uh, into an area, and we'll look at mm -hmm. the, the terrain. What, what is the reason? What are the barriers? We'll also look at what is the most accessible source of water. So in some instances, it will be piping, mm -hmm. etc. In some instances, it'll be a borehole. Mm -hmm. Um, in some instances, it'll be, you know, where there is no water, we'll actually have um, a, 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 um, a water purification or water manufacturing plant. Right. Um, so it just, it depends on the, the, the situation. We'll go in and assess and then... That's fascinating. Something. With the other projects, there's the 5 by 20 Let's talk about that. Okay, 5 by 20 first, just to clarify, is not a foundation project. Okay. It, is, it is a separate project, what we call inclusive business. Mm -hmm. It is Coca-Cola's commitment to empower 5 million women by the year 2020 through our value chain. Um, and what we do is we provide women entrepreneurs opportunities. Um, we economically empower women entrepreneurs through our value chain. So it is actually business. Uh, our foundation is purely 
um, philanthropic. But it, you know, when you when you think about it, you think CSR. Absolutely. But but actually, it's it's on the business side. It's strategic. It is. Okay. And that's what makes it sustainable. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. The other project. The other projects. The second is um, health systems, and this is actually something we've we've gotten into fairly recently. Um, we've been doing a lot of work in the health arena. As I said, we started with um, HIV AIDS, um, but we realized that <clears throat> African governments have become much more in much better at providing health care. Um, they're able to deal, for the most part, with um, prevention. Um, a lot of times they're able also to deal with treatment or they have sufficient support. Where they really struggle is with health systems. Right. And so our program, um, it's called Project Last Mile, is about helping African governments to create and sustain health systems um, that they need in order to, to, uh, to get product. Um, well, to get drugs to where they need to go, but basically to be able to run the health systems in a way that, that works. It sounds like quite a complex project. Where is it operational right now? Um, well, I'll give, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. We have just, um, we're just about to renew the, our initial project, our pilot, was in Tanzania um, with the medical health stores in Tanzania. Um, and what we did was we, Coca-Cola's big strength is logistics. Um, also cold chain distribution, mm -hmm. so cold supply chain, right. um, which was something they were struggling with. Vaccines were need to be transported cold. They were getting um, to you know to their destination when they had expired. So we provided um, two things. We provided uh, access to our um, maintenance uh, technology um, to help them in terms of how do we how do they maintain their fridges, their mm -hmm. refrigerated mm -hmm. trucks. Um, so that they don't experience as many breakdowns um, as as they do today. And then also just how to get drugs from point A to point B from a logistics standpoint in the most cost-effective way. That's fascinating. And you know, just a note to, to say the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, for instance, has been looking at ways of using a technology to ensure it's easier, easier and cheaper to get these drugs to actually, their destination. Yes, this uh, is actually um, in, in partnership. With, oh, right. So that okay. pilot was done with Bill, the Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates, Gates Foundation. Foundation. Yes. A, a yes. lot of work going into that. And it's yes. great to see a corporate like Coca-Cola getting involved in these kinds yes. of things. The youth initiative. Yes. Yes. Um, our newest <laughs> initiative, um, Yes, stands for Youth Empowered for Success. Um, and it's, it's a program that we have, it, we, we've recently launched. It'll, it'll be running in about in six countries in mm -hmm. Africa. But basically what the program involves is, well, let me start with the issue, okay. the problem that we're trying to solve. The, the, the problem, as you know, is, you know, we've, we've done a great job in Africa in educating young people. And so they come out of school with very high expectations, which mm -hmm. they rightfully should. But we don't have enough jobs. We, we are not generating jobs as quickly as we are building um, the, the youth Creating population. Creating a, a serious threat. It, exactly. Right. Um, and that has resulted in a lot of terrible things. I mean, mm. it, it's resulted in a very angry young population. Frustrated young frustrated, people. Frustrated, um, right. which then translates to security issues. Some of the terrorism issues that we've seen, those are angry young people saying, you know, I deserve better mm. than this mm. in society. Um, the issue, though, is even though they're educated, a lot of them lack the soft skills that are required to be successful in the workplace. Um, you know, the patience to, um, to persevere mm. when the work isn't exactly what you expect. How do they interview? Um, how do they even find a job? Mm. What, what, what is the right way to figure out how they, they are matched to a job? So the program is, is really about providing, one, the soft skills to help young people, um, to prepare them for, 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 the, for the marketplace. The second is to actually link them to job opportunities. Um, and what we're doing is we are ourselves, Coca-Cola, but also other corporates, government, saying putting um, a job match platform, an electronic platform Fantastic. in mm -hmm. place where young people can actually go. Um, and look for, or, you know, for, for jobs. And also employers mm -hmm. can come and look for young people who have gone through this training and therefore hopefully are better prepared. Right. Um, the third is what we call the enabling pillar. Um, for young people, it's not just enough to get them the job. We also want to make sure that they can stay and thrive in the job. Mm -hmm. And so we have e-mentoring. Um, you know, again, young people in our company, other companies, who are advising young people, uh, youth, as they look for a job and 
as they start a new job on the realities of right. the workplace. Right. Um, we're partnering with banks. We partnered with Chase Bank, for example, in Kenya um, to provide them with access to loans. Many of the young people, the economic opportunities for them are not so much in the, in the traditional um, or the, the formal workplace, but entrepreneurship opportunities. They need access to funding. And then the last part is what we're calling, you know, how do we create um, an enabling environment? We can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. um, for, for youth to flourish in these jobs, um, we need government to come in, for example, um, and help them in terms of, you know, maybe reducing taxes, um, giving them land that they can use to start their businesses. Um, and then also for government to help employers like ourselves to give us opportunities to create more jobs. So what are you finding in terms of partnerships with government and ability to lobby the public sector to create a more enabling environment with the governments you're dealing with in, across Africa? Mm -hmm. well, what is your sense? Are they willing to partner? Are they willing to listen? Are they evolving? Absolutely. And you know, the, the, this, this issue, youth empowerment, I think is on every agenda, okay. every government's agenda. Um, and so government has been very, very willing, not just to listen, but, you know, to say, you know, help, let us also be part of, of this Excellent. solution. Um, and in particular, because of the, the nature of what we're doing, we're talking a lot to local, local governments who are much closer to the youth, much closer mm -hmm. to the issues, getting a lot, there's a, generating a lot of excitement. Um, and what we're also trying to do is to make sure that what we do works with the programs, the initiatives that are already in place. Mm -hmm. um, by government. An example in Kenya would be um, the Oezo Fund, mm -hmm. um, you know, that provides access to, uh, to, 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 to funding. funding for young people. And so one of the things we're doing is training young people on how do you, access, how do you apply right. for a loan? How do you successfully apply? Because those are some of the factors. A lot of people complain and, and women and youth, you know, these funds are there, but how do we get them? You have to know how to write that letter exactly. to fill in that application form. You have to have a viable business plan. So there's a bit of financial literacy. There's and financial literacy, but there's also, um, you know, for example, the Kenyan government has put in place um, a policy that says one third of tenders will go to youth and women. Right. Young people are so overwhelmed with the idea of having to, you know, applying for maybe a multi-million dollar um, loan or a multi-million dollar tender, for example. Right. They don't realize that actually, number one, many uh, the government has actually waived the, the fees to the application fees. Right. And two, that you can apply for a loan on the strength of a tender that you've been, you know, where, where you've actually been awarded a tender. You can actually take that to a bank and, and get they a loan. will give you a loan on the basis of that. And they can finance what you need exactly. to put the product or service in place. Exactly. So research is key. Um, let's go to the big question now. A lot of young people watching and saying, oh, really? You have this platform? Mm -hmm. How can we access YES? <laughs> Several ways. Um, you know, it's almost coming to a neighborhood near you soon. Um, probably the most accessible way for young people to, to, um, to access the services mm. is this electronic platform that we are in the process of putting up. Right. Um, all the services that I've mentioned, uh, the training, um, there'll be training modules, um, the job match platform, e-mentoring, access to loans, all of that will be available through this job match, uh, sorry, through the electronic platform, the YES electronic platform. But as well, we will be starting businesses or we will be working to put um, uh, uh, spots in the community where young people can actually come um, and access the platform, but also access some of the people who are running our program, some of our implementing partners. Stay with the Africa Leadership Dialogues. So right now you have, yes, kiosks of sorts yes. on the ground. What, what have you found uh, in terms of how they're operating? Um, well, the yes, maybe just to describe it very quickly for the audience, um, is a normal Coca-Cola kiosk, but with a, with a, with a twist. Mm -hmm. We have equipped them with solar power. We've installed um, or included um, ac uh, internet, um, internet access, mm -hmm. and a small sort of seating area. And through this, young people can, well, first of all, the, the kiosk is run by a group of youth. 
Um, so it's right. providing jobs in, in, in that way. But also young people from that community can come and access the electronic platform, right. the, jo the, the, the um, training, the job match platform, et cetera. And the youth who are running these, these kiosks have actually gone through the training as well. So they also act as facilitators. Um, what we found is that this kiosk and these, these um, services, these enabling services, are actually giving rise to more businesses. Businesses are springing up around the kiosk. Mm -hmm. you know, as an example, one young group, uh, group of young men came and said, you know what, we've been doing car washing manually, but if we had access to money, we could, um, we could automate this and we could wash a lot more cars. Well, they got a, they got a loan and they're in the process of, wow. of doing that. The young men who operate that kiosk, um, they realized that you know, the, the demand was so high, they needed more space. Um, so they've rented the kiosk behind, right. Um, right, right next to them. They've been able to do that through the proceeds that they have, but they've also started an, a new business, um, PlayStation, uh, a PlayStation, um, I guess, uh, academy or where they actually an, train. An area them, where young people can, can come, come and play. And, and play. Um, and they charge a small fee for yes. that, but then they're also able to continue to, with the, the training in that area as well. Right. It's incredible because what it's doing is providing an ecosystem of business growth and development Correct. Um, that didn't exist that before. That didn't exist before. What we're finding most interesting and what gives us the greatest hope is that what is needed to take these young people from joblessness to actually having a job is very little. It's not, it's not a lot. Um, you know, for some of them, it was creating space for them to be able to run a vocational training business. Um, the loan, as an example, that they, they weren't asking for, they were asking for $2,000, mm. enabling them to take a business that was struggling to a business that's thriving. Mm. So, you know, we believe that it is possible to do this. It is possible to do it at scale. Um, and so we're very, very hopeful. We, we uh, in the YES initiative, Coca-Cola has made a commitment to empower 25,000 youth. Um, but we really see that as just the beginning. And the multiplier effect of that is, is huge. Absolutely. Um, we've been talking Coca-Cola Foundation and your work there, but there's so many aspects to your life, Susan, that are quite incredible. Dr. Susan Boya Kidero is uh, the daughter of a uh, celebrated uh, politician, uh, the late Thomas Mboya. Um, his name has traveled the world. I was speaking with someone from Papua New Guinea uh, some time back and he said, Thomas Boya visited us, Tom Boya visited us many years ago. Wow. How is his family? Wow. And, and you know, it says that he had a great legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you run the Zawadi Africa Educational Fund. Was that inspired by your father? It, absolutely. Um, you know, I heard a lot of stories, obviously, um, and met many of the beneficiaries. And what struck me was that most of them were men. Mm -hmm. Even though women went um, this on is this- This for on, his program, for his the program. to America. Yes, yes. And so back, back in those days, even though women were also beneficiaries, for many of them, translating that into a career was, was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Some did. Um, you know, most famously, um, Wangari Mathai, Mathai, Professor yes. Wangari Mathai mm -hmm. was one of them. Um, but for many of them, they weren't able to realize the full potential. And so, I, I wanted to change that. I wanted to continue what my father started, but do it in a way that enabled us to create a pipeline of young women leaders right. for the continent. Right. What are you finding 12 years in? Can you believe it? Yes. It's 12 I, years since you started it? Yeah, it shows that I'm old. <laughs> What are you finding when you look at the graduates now and what they're achieving? Is, is there a legacy that's being created? I, I, I believe there is. And just as the program that my father had has produced, you know, has had amazing mm. results, knock-on effects, as, right. as you know. Um, the father of President um, Barack Obama, Obama was one of the beneficiaries. Who, who would have imagined that? Right. Um, the that young today the president of America exists ex because, because of the pro travels. Because yes. of something, as you said, something small results in something um, amazing. So we are at a point now where they are actually coming back. Um, the girls for, in the Zawadi program are coming back. Um, we encourage them to get higher degrees, to get a master's, to get a PhD. So they're coming back very well educated. Mm -hmm. They're landing fantastic jobs, quite mm -hmm. honestly. <laughs> um, and, and that gives them an opportunity and a platform for them to do work in the community. And probably the most visible um, outcome 
of the Zawadi program and mm -hmm. the one that I am most proud of. Yeah. Um, a group of the girls have started a program that they call Beyond the Classroom. Okay. It is a mentoring program, so a lot of them come home during the holidays. So they, we, we facilitate um, or enable them to go out to high schools and spend a full day with young women in the high schools, talking to them about life, yeah. um, talking to them about how to stay in school, how to plan for the future. And, and what is so powerful about this program is that four years ago, they were the high school girl. And so they're credible. You know, if I went to a high school in, you know, a marginalized area, no one would believe me. There's a disconnect. There's There's a dis a, yeah. But when someone who went there mm. or someone who says, I was in a school mm. exactly like yours, I know the issues that you're facing. Mm -hmm. I know it seems impossible, mm -hmm. but let me tell you how you can actually do this. That's beautiful. And congratulations to the girls. Um, in education, you've mentioned that, you know, Africa has made strides mm -hmm. in terms of ensuring that there's access to education for many young Africans. The challenge, it seems, is the skills gap yes. that we're finding. Yes, there are few jobs, but even for the jobs that exist, mm -hmm. there are huge gaps in terms of the, the graduates that we're seeing. Sure. How do you think that can be addressed? Well, you know, the gap, I think we can look at in two ways. There's the skills gap and then there's the job opportunity gap. Mm -hmm. um, the skills gap, as I said, is it's, it's really about providing soft skills. What, what's happening is, you, you, you know, as more and more young people are, be, are able to take their education all the way to, high, you know, finish high school, go to university, but they're coming from families that don't have that background, where their parents didn't go to high school, their parents didn't go to university, and so can't advise them on, you know, some of just the basics, the, un, the things that they don't teach you. Um, about how to get a job. And that some assume that you should know. You should know, but, but you don't. And, mm -hmm. and you know, if you are the first in your family to ever search for a formal job, you know, the, how, how can we help you to prepare for that? How can we tell you what an employer is going to expect um, from you? And so you know, that's, that's one aspect of the gap. The other, of course, is there aren't enough jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and so we believe that entrepreneurship is something that is not just important, it is critical for us in Africa. We've got to get that right. If we do, we can resolve this issue. Let's go to, and uh, a lot of people are saying, Susan is also the wife of the Nairobi governor, and we really want to know about that part of your life. But I want to widen the scope a bit. Wife of the, wife, first of all, which has Wives, its own, yes. <laughs> yes. you know. Um, wife of a governor. Yes. Mother. Yes. Career woman, yes, and career woman who's trapped. You have an office in South Africa. You have an office in Kenya. You travel the all world. All the time. Yes. yes. <laughs> How do you cope? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, people ask me that all the time, and sometimes mm -hmm. I wonder that myself. I, I, I think what you have to do is one, just really, really plan. I, I plan. Very, very, um, you know, my, my husband says, you know, in a military way. <laughs> <laughs> Meticulously. Um, yes, yeah. and, and rigid. Yes, and, you know, this right. is what has to happen. Regimented. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, but I'm also very fortunate in that I have a lot of help. Good. I have um, a team that helps me on, you know, things to, related to um, being the wife of the governor. Mm -hmm. um, I have a great team at Coca-Cola. Um, you know, Zawadi has a great management team. There's mm -hmm. really not much that I, I, I do there anymore. So, you know, it's about having the right people, mm. having the right support in place. I look like I'm doing a lot, but actually <laughs> there's a lot of people doing a lot. That's smart. So creating the structures yes. and the systems yes. so that and it works. So it works. And then that gives me time to be with my husband, mm -hmm. to spend time with my son. Um, you know, that's where the, the military, you know, when my son is home, I really want to be able to focus and, and, and give him the time that he deserves. Um, for my husband, you know, we've sort of learned to make everything a date. Um, you know, where you know he's invited <laughs> to, plan to a lot again. Of, yes. Yeah, but you know, we, we, we have to say, you know, you, he he's invited to an event, mm -hmm. um, a dinner. Okay, that's going to be the date yes. for this week. <laughs> it's going to work that way. Yes. Which, which uh, utilization of time yes. is, is optimal? Yeah. Um, as an African woman, when you look at the continent today. Do you feel pride, dismay, despair, hope? What, what words come to mind? How do you feel about Africa? I think a little of all the things you just said, a little of everything, um, but mostly hope, okay. mostly hope. Um, I'm proud of, you know, many of the young people today are breaking the rules. 
um, you know, they don't see themselves as, you know, diminished in any way because mm -hmm. they're African. If anything, they believe that that gives them um, an advantage. An and we're seeing that, you know, when we see a young woman like Lupita Nyong'o getting an Oscar, that gives me hope mm. that, you know, other young people will see that and, and work towards that. Um, I think what we need to do in Africa is look at some of the quote unquote challenges and say, how do we turn those into opportunities? Our youth, I believe, is an untapped resource that if we are able to, to tap into, if we're able to unleash the potential of the young people we have on this continent, we will leapfrog everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, technology and leveraging technology, again, is a huge opportunity for us to close that gap. Um, you know, we've seen that with innovations like M-Pesa, um, where you can now do business without, you know, from the comfort of your home. We couldn't do that before. We are able to do so much more than many in the developed world. E exactly, through, 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 through those, and, and more and more we're seeing those, the, that type of innovation overcome some of the barriers that, that we have, mm -hmm. um, the natural barriers, the infrastructure barriers. Um, and more and more, um, I believe that we will not, as I said, not only be closing the gap, but in some ways we'll be leapfrogging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been reading a lot about the internet of things. I'm very fascinated with that, <laughs> that the whole idea that, um, you know, we can actually put sensors um, to enable us to perform uh, tasks better, mm. um, to understand what's not working and fix it. Um, and if I may, I'd love to give you an example <laughs> of that. Um, this is now in my other role with Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. um, Nairobi County has struggled, as you know, with um, being able to manage the, 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 um, the environment and collecting garbage. And a lot of it was due to inefficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and so they've worked with IBM Research Labs and they've actually put sensors on the trucks which enable the, um, the supervisors from their office mm -hmm. to monitor where each and Collection. every truck is um, and be able to send feedback and say, you know what, we're, we, we, we need more trucks here. Or, you know what, that truck has been idle for a little bit too yes. long. They can also analyze the patterns and change them. They can even tell, because these, you know, these trucks have a gyroscope, you know, where do we have very rough roads? Um, which then Nairobi County can go in and say, you know what, we need to, to do something there. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that type of technology, which is avail as available to us in Africa as it is to anyone, any, you know, anywhere in the world, that type of thing is going to help close the gap. It, exciting stuff. Um, when you look at Nairobi County today, what impact do you most want to have being the wife of the governor? Education, not surprisingly, okay, okay. not surprisingly, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to focus my activities just based on the many things that I do. Mm -hmm. and, and I've chosen from a county standpoint to focus on education um, and in particular a program that we call um, no, Ch no Child Left Behind. It's we have borrowed that name. Yes. Um, and what we're trying to do, one third of, of children um, in, in Nairobi today are not in school or they're in informal schools that are barely providing them with, uh, with, with a, an education. Um, and so we've created a program, um, has several, several facets. One is around providing access to a proper education. Um, we've been working with organizations like Bridge International who have created, and I won't go into a lot of detail, but they've created a system um, that enables untrained teachers mm -hmm. or, or uh, people in the community, even university students, to actually uh, teach students the curriculum right. and teach them in a way that it is, it is effective. Right. Um, you know, we're talking with UNICEF about providing access to food right. for, these, for, for young, young kids. And then access to shelter. Nairobi is building, um, has, has built, um, I think, two homes, or is in the process of building two homes for children children's um, children's that will also serve as rehabilitation centers mm. for, for, street, for street children. And so my hope is that, you know, by the time this term is over, we will have gotten a foothold um, and really started to make a difference in the lives of young children in, in Nairobi. Wow, thank you so much for making time. We've come to the end and we could go on. I know you want to go on, but we've got to end the show, um, the interview. So. We always end with the words to all the audience watching across Africa. What message do you have for all those watching who feel inspired and want to be part of making a change? How do you start where you are in your space, please? 
Um, what I would say to anybody who wants to make a difference is just start. Just start. Um, you know, I started Zawadi, uh, you know, 13 years ago with two girls, uh, two young women that I myself brought to the U.S. Myself, you know, in my car, took them to school. Myself brought, um, you know, the food and, and um, books and things like that for them. Whatever little you can do, there are many of us. We're a billion Africans. If every one of us does something, that will make a huge difference just start if each of us does something that would make a huge difference thank you so much susan thank you for joining thanks us. for having me stay with the africa leadership dialogues my name is susan boya kidero um, i'm the president of the coca-cola africa foundation and um, you are watching the africa leadership dialogues Time now for your views on the issues. This week we asked you, how can the unemployed youth of Africa be empowered to contribute to economic growth? Miriam Makeba says, the private sector should offer graduate trainee programs and community-based projects that create jobs for the youth. Hello, I'm Evelyn Pulamaikon. I'm watching Africa Leadership Dialogue from Nairobi County. And uh, one of the ways in which we can empower youth to contribute to the economic growth is by providing them with access to the entrepreneurial and experiences. And this uh, will ensure them that uh, they have the, they realize their talent and even uh, realize their dreams. To join our conversation, go to our G Plus page, Africa Leadership Dialogues, on Facebook, Africa Leadership Dialogues, on Twitter, at Africa LD, and on WhatsApp, send your video comments to plus 254-715-816-033. And now to Africa's top 10. This week on Africa's Top 10, we feature countries with widespread internet access in schools. The objective of the research was to establish how widespread internet access is in schools. This is categorized from one being non-existent and seven being extremely widespread. This is according to the World Economic Forum. Starting us off at number 10 is Namibia with an index of 3.5 and is ranked 106 globally. Coming in at number 9 is Zambia. Hailed as one of the world's fastest economically reformed countries, Zambia recorded an index of 3.66 and is ranked 97 globally. Positioned at number 8 is Tunisia. The North African state is ranked 96 globally with an index of 3.68. Taking the number 7 spot is Cap Verde. The volcanic island nation comes in at number 90 in the global ranking with an index of 3.82. At number 6 is the Gambia. The smallest country on mainland Africa is ranked 86 globally with an index of 3.89. Senegal takes the number 5 spot with an index of 3.9 and is ranked 85 globally. Slotted in at number 4 is Kenya. The East African country recorded an index of 4.1 and is ranked 79 globally. Anchored in at number 3 is Seychelles with an index of 4.2 and is ranked 74 globally. Coming in at number 2 is Rwanda. The land of a thousand hills is ranked 70 globally with an index of 4.3. At number one this week is Mauritius. The island nation recorded an index of 4.4 and is ranked 65 globally. And that's Africa's top 10 this week. I love our African proverb this week. It goes, when a woman is hungry, she says, roast something for the children that they might eat. Blessings to you and blessings to Africa.